insolvency. How many of you are thankful for that lighthouse? I hope you know what we're talking about. That lighthouse, the Lord Jesus Christ, and what he did for us. We're thankful for the lighthouse because of what it did to us. It saved us not just from the penalty of sin, but it saved us from our own inadequacies of living this life. We have now the help of the Lord Jesus Christ, both in this world and the next. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Take your Bibles, please, and turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We'll get there momentarily. As I mentioned, our Vacation Bible School uh, begins this evening. and It's one of the most intensive weeks of the entire year of service that we have unto the Lord. We praise the Lord for that. We praise the Lord for the opportunities that it gives us uh, to impact the lives of these young people. And uh, as it's been said already, that uh, these young people go back unto parents. And parents hear about what they're learning. And there's so many young people that are signed up and registered for our VBS that are from lost families, the unchurched families. And we praise the Lord for the opportunity not just to have their children uh, uh, to be able to impact with the Lord Jesus Christ and his word, but also to have that information taken back into the home. So keep that as a matter of prayer. And we praise the Lord for the opportunity of a vacation Bible school. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of opportunity that goes right along with it. Each year, I begin the week of Vacation Bible School with dedication of our vacation, uh, yeah, of our vacation Bible School workers. Every worker, we want to be dedicated unto the Lord because every worker is important. No work, no service that we do unto the Lord ought to be without invoking His power in our lives by, first of all, looking and saying, Lord, Help me to see if there's any sin in my life that may be hindering me from being used by you this week at Vacation Bible School. Or if you cannot serve here, maybe you're going to be praying for us. Is there anything in my life, Lord, that may be hindering, separating between me and you that you're not going to listen to my prayers? And so it's important for us to understand about what dedication is and uh, that is what the gist of this message is this morning. Understanding dedication is the title. And I want us to see what God says about dedication. Father, I pray that you would allow me to have your strength and power right now from your Holy Spirit to be able to share what you've laid upon my heart from your word. Thank you, Father, for this week, and we thank you for all that it affords to us. But Lord, I pray right now in this service for each one of us, that are here. We're here for a particular purpose. It may not be the purpose same as yours for us, but Father, we pray for that purpose that you have for each one of us, that we would realize it, and that, Lord, you would allow it to be accomplished. Thank you, Father, for all that you're going to do, and we ask your blessing as we continue with it. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to first look at the definition of dedication. What is it? does it mean? There are several words that are used interchangeably sometimes. The word dedicate, consecrate, sanctify, present, all of them have to do with dedication. All of them have to do with presenting ourselves before the Lord, being separated uh, for a particular purpose unto him. And the word dedicate, the word sanctify, pretty close in the meaning of the, those uh, sanctify means to be set apart, and dedicate is the same thing. To be set apart as clean, as holy unto the Lord, and also to be set apart unto the Lord for his use. Um, there are two verses that I wanted to share. One is here in 2 Corinthians 4 uh, and verse uh, uh, 7. It says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now, we're just earthen vessels. Do you know what an earthen vessel is? It's a clay pot. <laughs> it's nothing fancy about it. There's nothing fancy about us. There's nothing special about us. Uh, we are uh, not remarkable of ourselves, and that's the treasure. We have this treasure. We have this great thing to be celebrated that we're just earthen vessels, and that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. When we 
work in vacation Bible school, first of all, it's not supposed to be out of our own power. Secondly, it's not supposed to be about us and what we're doing, and if we're doing a good job even, but it's supposed to be about him. We're just a clay pot. He's the one it's all about, and we're supposed to be serving him. So we're to be set apart to be clean and holy and for his use. The second one is over in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 21. And here, uh, Paul the apostle writes to young Timothy, and he says, If a man therefore purge himself from these, and one, you have to go back and look in the context there, uh, where he talks about, let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If we purge ourselves from that sin, if we keep our sin confessed so that we are ready to be used, he says then if we purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel, like an earthen vessel, but he shall be a vessel unto honor, it says. Sanctified, there's the word, and meet fit, for the master's use and prepared, ready, prepared unto every good work. And so God wants us to be that clean vessel. He wants us to be that vessel that's set apart unto him for use. And that is a basic meaning of those two words, dedicate and sanctify. Then there's the word to consecrate, uh, to be given fully unto the Lord, relinquishing of power and control of ourself and giving it to the Lord, letting him have control. I mean, it is his body that we acknowledge that we have, and uh, we are to, uh, to allow him to do with it as he sees fit, to consecrate ourselves unto him. Uh, closely related to that is the word uh, that Foster read to us in Romans chapter 12, verses uh, verse 1 there. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable. We are to present, we are to officially, and I believe the word also, as I'll explain later, is publicly, uh, yield forth ourselves unto God. So here are the words, and here's a little bit of the definition. Now, as we put that together and look at a definition in general, it means to set apart ourselves unto God as clean and ready for his use, invoking his power and blessing. So whether we're talking about a thing or whether we're talking about a person, ourself, we are to give ourselves fully unto the Lord to be ready, clean, prepared to do his work. And we are to seek his power, seek his blessing upon the efforts that we put forth in his in his name. And that is what a, a general way of looking at what dedication is. Now, Vance Havener, I put it this way, he said, in times past, I pray, Lord, use me. I do not pray that prayer anymore. God is using us now as much as he can. He wants to show himself strong in our behalf, not to show us strong in his behalf know the difference. He is the one that is strong. It's not us being strong in, in for him. Uh, if he could use us more, he would. Our prayer should be, uh, uh, Lord, make me usable. Not use me, but make me usable. If you're usable, God will use you. And that's important to recognize as well. We can sit back and say, well, you know, the Lord hasn't told me anything he wants me to do. Or maybe if we get ourselves ready to be used, then the Lord would be ready to use us. And so it's important for us to understand to dedicate ourselves unto the Lord, to present ourselves clean, ready for his use, and invoking his power and blessing. Now the purpose of dedication is threefold. Number one, it is to recognize ownership. To recognize ownership. In Psalm 122, in verse 1, it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now, what does that have to do with that ownership? Uh, it's not just the house about the Lord. It's not just the house for the Lord, but it's the house of the Lord. It's the Lord's house. You know, that's true, not just at this building, this room right here, auditorium. 
But it's true of every building on this property. It all belongs to him. It's his. And we need to recognize it that way to understand that we're in God's house. It is the house of God. And therefore, as it says in 1 Corinthians 6, not just in the last two verses, but uh, from verse 10 on, it talks about that our bodies as believers are the temple of God. It, it is his house, his dwelling place. And because we're bought with a price, the Lord Jesus Christ redeemed us, then our lives are not our own, but it belongs to him. And we're to glorify God because of that very fact that we belong to him and we are to serve him. We are to recognize his ownership in our life, whether it be a building, whether it be a body, or whether it be a ministry such as Vacation Bible School, it belongs to him. It is his. And therefore, my body, these buildings, this ministry of Vacation Bible School coming up, it belongs to him, and we are just stewards of it. And what does God say about a steward? He should be found faithful. We have that uh, and to recognize of his ownership uh, in our purpose of dedicating Second purpose is to separate for use, as we saw just a minute ago in the definition. When we talk about dedication of things, in 1 Kings chapter 9 and verse 3, it says, And the Lord said unto Solomon, it's talking about, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. I have hallowed, it says. The scripture says, hallowed be thy name in the Lord's Prayer. What does it mean? To be holy, to be set apart is, is different. Um, I have hallowed this house, this temple, God said. In 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 5, after King Solomon offered a sacrifice, the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. It's one of our words that we've already defined. He dedicated it unto the Lord. Things, the house of God. Uh, a people in Acts 13 and, 20, and verse 2. It says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate there's our word, separate for me, uh, me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them, to be separated, to be set apart unto the Lord. All of these are illustrations of things and of people that uh, are separated for God's use. There's the third uh, purpose of uh, dedication, and it's to invoke God's guidance, his power, and his blessing. <clears throat> invoke, as I've said just recently, is to petition for God's help, to ask for his support, to, to ask, Lord, I want your power to be brought into my life and to my efforts. Because for us to stand and try to do our work, whether it be from nursery to helper to teacher to uh, game leader to uh, snack uh, person, uh, whatever the responsibility that you have in Vacation Bible School, if you're trying to do it in your own power, it's vain. It's empty. It's wood, hay, and stubble, as the Bible terms it. And we have the responsibility to look and say, Lord, I have volunteered myself to serve in the capacity that I am. Now I'm asking that you would set me apart for that work. That you would guide me in every responsibility that I have and that you would empower me to be able to accomplish that responsibility. It doesn't matter how much and how easy you think it may be. How many times uh, have I stood to do a particular ministry and and not cross my mind because I've done it uh, so many times and think, oh, you know, I can do this. And the Lord remind me and humble me very quickly to recognize I can't do it without him. 
It may be something very simple. And all of a sudden, my mind will go blank. And I don't know who I'm talking to. Can't remember a name. Or I can't remember a thought uh, in direction. So it is important for us to ask and petition the Lord for his help, for his guidance, and for his power. It's exemplified in Solomon's prayer of dedication again of the temple in 2 Chronicles 6 and verse 21. He says there, hearken, hearken therefore unto the supplications of thy servant and of thy people Israel, which uh, they shall make toward this place, this temple. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven, and when thou hearest, forgive. Hearken. Here, we're to ask for God to interact, to intervene, to forgive, to empower. Acknowledging that it is for him and relying upon him to get it accomplished. His power, his blessing. That's what we're to be asking for. And then there's some other examples of dedication. Three types of dedication, as I mentioned some a uh, while ago. There's specific buildings, such as the temple uh, in, uh, in Jerusalem that uh, was dedicated unto the Lord. Solomon said again in 2 Chronicles 2, 4, Behold, I build a house to the name of, of the Lord my God to dedicate it to him. It is the dedicating of the temple there unto the Lord, setting it apart for him, for his purpose, and for his glory. There are many passages that speak, speak about the temple uh, being dedicated, God's house being dedicated unto the Lord. All of the buildings, as I said, that's on this property have been dedicated unto the Lord for that very purpose. Set apart unto him as owner for his use, care, and for his glory. And there's secondly, the example of things, as we said, 1 Corinthians, excuse me, 1 Kings uh, chapter 7 and verse 51. It says, So was uh, ended all the work that King Solomon made for the house of the Lord. And Solomon brought in the things which David his father had dedicated, even the silver and the gold and the vessels did he put among the treasures of the house of the Lord. Solomon took everything that David had collected, all of the silver and the gold, the utensils that had been made, because David wanted to build a house unto the Lord, and, and God said, no, you're not going to build a house. Your son, Solomon, will. And so Solomon built the temple. Magnificent. Y'all probably have heard many times of people or of books that have talked about Solomon's temple and all of its glory. I don't think that we ought to have a church building inside all the pews overlaid in gold. Okay. But I do think the principle of giving God our best applies. It should not be shoddy. It ought to be the best that we can possibly do. And the same thing is true with our lives when we look at it as well. We're giving ourselves unto the Lord. We're giving our service unto the Lord. And it ought not just to be that's good enough mentality. But it ought to be, Lord, I want to give you the very best that I have. I want to do for you the very best that I can because whether whatever responsibility it is, you're not doing it for a, per a person. You're not doing it for a student. You're doing it as unto the Lord for him. And it ought to be the best that we possibly can. Dedication of things unto the Lord. Uh, there are times when there are certain things that we are to dedicate unto him. Our church van sitting in the parking lot is an illustration of one. We had a dedication service for that van. And it was just recognizing, Lord, thank you for your provision. Thank you for bringing about so that we could purchase this van. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to use it in thy ministry and for your glory. And we dedicated, set it apart for that particular purpose. He, recognizing he is the owner for his use, for his care, and for his glory. And then of us people, here we are. 
exemplified by Hannah with her child Samuel. You remember the story of what we're told in Scripture that happened. God brought it about. Uh, 1 Samuel 1, 27 and 28, she had prayed for a child. She was childless. And in that day, that was a very serious thing. Uh, and so she prayed, Lord, uh, give me a, a son. And uh, she promised him that she would give him back unto him. And God did. And 1 Samuel 1, 27 and 28 says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him unto the Lord. The word lent means to give unto him. I have given him unto the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent unto the Lord. And that is something of responsibility too, as we see an example here. He shall be given unto the Lord to give, to dedicate a person. There are other implications that come along with it. And this is the very important part that I want you to get and understand. All Christians should sanctify themselves, to dedicate themselves unto the Lord. And it should be in two ways. Number one, it should be by choice, willingly. By choice, willingly. There is no service in the church of God and in the ministry of the Lord that should be done by a person that feels like I don't have any choice. If you feel like that you don't have any choice, you've got to serve because there's nobody else. Be careful that God may not remove you and show that it wasn't about you. It's his ministry. We're his people. And we're to come to him willingly by choice. The Whippoorwill song that I've sung so many times has that emphasized in its words and its meaning that God wants us to come to him by choice, willingly before the Lord. So it is that that we're to do. And the illustration of it is in Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 6. And there Nehemiah was rebuilding the walls of uh, Jerusalem after the captivity. And as the Jews came back with Nehemiah with the materials that God had pr provided, and he says there in, in verse 6 of Nehemiah 4, So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. That is a good statement. That's admirable. They willingly worked. They had a mind to work for the Lord. And that is the way that we ought to have it as well. By choice, willingly, we serve the Lord. Secondly, the implication is for us to dedicate ourselves to the Lord by choice publicly. As I mentioned earlier, in Romans 12, 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice unto the Lord. We are to present ourselves unto the Lord. Do you know what the that illustration comes from? It comes from the children of Israel at the tabernacle and temple when they would bring their lamb or their, their goat or whatever for sacrifice for sin, and they would give it to the priest, and it would be slaughtered and put onto the altar and burned uh, there as a sacrifice unto the Lord. They didn't make a private appointment to come in and do it when nobody else was looking. It was in front of everybody that they presented themselves unto the Lord with their sacrifice. And now God says for us in the New Testament, whom Jesus Christ has been sacrificed for us, we are to present ourselves unto him a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him. Because that's our reasonable service. That's the logical response of our service of worship unto the Lord. And it needs to be done publicly. That's why we're going to have a public dedication. But you know, before we have a group public dedication, there may be someone that would say right now, Pastor, I, 
I have never really publicly dedicated myself individually into the Lord. I know that I've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, and I have been baptized and, in that sense, given a testimony publicly that I'm saved. But I haven't really come forward in a church service and said, Pastor, I want to dedicate myself unto the Lord and ask people to pray for me that God would prepare me to be used by him. Now, does that mean that person's going to be perfect from here out? No. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. There's nobody in here that are perfect people. We're all sinners. But if we have made the choice to receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, we have been saved from the penalty of that sin. We have been given a new life in Jesus Christ. God has begun to do new things in our life to make us more and more into the image of his son, the Lord Jesus. But we're just saying, I am surrendering to that process. I am dedicating, giving myself, recognizing, Lord, I belong to you. Lord, I want your guidance. I want your power to be upon me to do whatever service that you would have me to do. I'm willing for that to be true. Has it been a long time since you have publicly dedicated yourself to the Lord? Or maybe never? In the service invitation here in just a moment, I'll give you that opportunity that if you would like to dedicate yourself, all you do is just come forward and say it. There's no hoops to jump through. And we recognize your decision to yield yourself in that way. And we come together with you to pray for you as you continue in that journey. That's simply it. The choice is yours. Come before him willingly. Serve him willingly. And dedicate yourself publicly. We're shortly going to have each one of our VBS workers come forward for this uh, dedicatory prayer. But first, is anyone here want to, to dedicate themselves, sanctify themselves before the Lord? Two ways. I just explained one for the Christian, if you'd like to do that. But I'm also going to say this to those, any that may be here that have never trusted Christ as Savior. When Christ saves us, he sets us apart unto him. That's sanctification. In position, we're set apart as holy and perfect before God. Therefore, we are, will, we are ready to go into his heaven, into his presence. But we are far from the practical holiness so there's two parts. There's one making the choice and saying, I want to choose the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I want him to cleanse me of my sin and make me ready for heaven. And then it's those that say, Pastor, I'm already saved. I recognize that God owns me. I belong to him, and I want to dedicate myself unto the Lord this morning. Whichever of those two that you would like to do, uh, God is waiting on us. Let's pray. We've got plenty of time this morning to be able to take the time right now for anyone that would like to trust Jesus Christ or anyone that would like to personally dedicate their life unto the Lord before we go into this group dedication. We're going to have one verse of the invitation to be played. I believe that if you have made up your mind to give yourself
yourself with the Lord, whether it be for salvation or whether it be for dedication of service, that you don't need several verses in order to walk forward. Just come forward on this one verse and we'll take it from there. Father, I pray that you will help our hearts to respond to you in such a way that we are not embarrassed at all to have other people know that we are totally dedicated unto you. Father, may that be our choice today if we've not already done it. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing.